Hi guys. Um, so my name is Emma Kaplan, and I'd first like to start off by thanking Mr. Nelson for giving me this opportunity. And thank you guys for bearing with me as I nervously stumble through the speech as I just did because I'm shaking. <laughs> I came to GA in fifth grade, and I failed the very first assignment that I was ever given. And I mean miserably failed. It was a test on the 50 states, and I could only identify 13. It would have been a different story if I was a student back in 1776, but that just wasn't the case. The night before the test, I remember I was sitting at my kitchen table with my family, and I told them how nervous I was. They tried to comfort me and said things like, you'll be all right, you studied your hardest, that's all you can do. But I broke down in tears and confessed to them that I, in fact, did not study at all. <laughs> Not because I didn't want to, but because I didn't know how to. I had never been asked to prepare for a test before. My family berated me, and it was in that moment that I never felt like such a failure. So, I failed the test, and I got to retake it, and I passed, but it was mortifying. Things were much smoother in middle school, as I continued to struggle with my studying habits and it became harder to try and fight that part of my brain that screamed failure. I kind of started to believe it. I couldn't help the part of myself that wanted to please, so I gave some effort, but I'd play off my failures by pretending I didn't really care that much or just made self-deprecating jokes, as I still do. But as I look back on those times now, I realize that those were just some serious defense mechanisms I would use to avoid how I was really feeling. Defeated. When I entered my freshman year, I was still struggling. My sister was a senior, and I envied her accomplishments. She was the top of her class, a Patriot scholar, and a prefect. All I wanted in the world was to be just like her. But it felt hopeless. Despite the unwavering support from my friends, family, and teachers, it didn't really seem like there was much of a point. It was a few weeks into my freshman year, freshman year summer, when I received my grades. I did very poorly. In fact, I was incredibly frustrated because I had been told over and over by so many teachers and my family that I had so much potential and that I'm better than what those grades represented. But I thought they were a bunch of liars. <laughs> and I thought, well, if I'm so smart, then why is my GPA so terrible? This was the second time that I felt like a complete failure. I'm really lucky to have such supportive parents. They'd say to me, you can only go up from here. But I didn't see it that way. I saw it as, I'm here and I'm gonna stay here. When sophomore year arrived, I, my sister was no longer at GA and I wanted to fill her shoes. I began the year with a really good head on my shoulders, feeling positive for the new school year. But my home life got pretty difficult. My brother was diagnosed with cancer, and my home life kind of fell apart. Sorry. <laughs> I would come home to only one of my parents while the other was in DC with my brother getting treatment. And my mom and dad became a lot quieter and would tend to seclude themselves. Unfortunately, I didn't really have the support system that I was hoping for for my new year, new student attitude. I remember when I got my first interim grades back, I sat in one of the study rooms in the library and I cried. <laughs> I didn't feel like they reflected me. I know, it's pitiful. <laughs> but I didn't know how to get better. And it felt like there was B's and mostly C's to find me. The winter of my sophomore year was my abyss. Also, shout out to Ms. Burnett for teaching me what that word means. I felt pretty real life is growth and growth is slow and initially unrewarding. I realized that I needed to take responsibility for my own success. So I did, and I moved those C's to B's and those B's into B pluses. It wasn't easy, it's a lot of work. You have to push yourself. But I ended my sophomore year with a GPA that was a little better. Yet it still didn't feel like enough. I still yearned for something that I could be really successful at. So the summer of my sophomore year, I started doing more graphic design and writing sketches some of which I turned into videos, which you may know from my YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and I started to feel that fulfillment. I found something that not only I love, but I seem to be pretty good 
that too. I took my newfound mentality into my junior year and I told myself that if I wanted to see A's on my transcript, then I had to work for it myself. I had to find something within me that made it worth it. I knew the people who surrounded me saw my potential, but my junior year was about proving that potential to myself. As I entered my senior year, there was a lot of weight on my shoulders. The task of getting me to a school that I loved, that offered the major that I wanted and would ultimately accept me, it was hard. I went full throttle. Trying to balance 100% to my classes, extracurriculars, and my social life wasn't easy. It drained me. But there's one really important thing that I've learned through all of this. Determination, persistence, realism, and wanting success more than your next breath. These are the keys to success. I think this is really powerful. Because at the end of the day, I couldn't wait around and hope things would work out for me. I needed to put myself out there and try something new if something wasn't working. Because once you find the goodness in yourself and the potential, is when the support from the people around you turns into respect. Thank you.